tough out there. When you start talking about gangs, drugs, alcohol, bullying, and what our kids have to navigate, you know, decisions that they have to make daily, many are adult decisions. We need to provide them the tools, the skills, knowledge, and ability to be able to make those decisions that are in their best interest. And I think we as an adults and people in uh, positions need to take that opportunity to hear their voices because in a lot of cases, what they're saying makes a lot of sense. When you're able to read the words and hear the voices, we gather a better understanding of some of the challenges of our young people. We have committed to stopping the cycle of violence in our lives, both by our personal choices and by sharing our stories and experiences with others. Do the Right Thing gives us that opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, the Do the Right Thing National Ambassadors. The Do the Right Thing Challenge works because it creates a new network of positive communications. Choosing non-valid methods to help yourself is powerful. Thank you for being amazing role models. You guys can help lead us to the country where we need to go. And to all of our uh, 15th uh, annual National Ambassadors, congratulations. To stand up, don't stand by. Do the difference, be the difference. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the National Campaign to Stop Violence's Do the Right Thing Challenge. The program is the initiative of the Kuwait America Foundation, a non-governmental organization which works to strengthen ties among the people of Kuwait and the United States. The National Do the Right Thing Challenge began in 1996. It gives middle school students an opportunity to examine the impact of violence on their lives in classroom discussions and in written form. One of the primary objectives is to motivate students to make a personal commitment in writing to help prevent and reduce youth violence in their home, school, and communities. The small program that began locally in our nation's capital has now expanded to 22 cities nationwide. Over the last 20 years, 1.8 million students have participated in Do the Right Thing classroom discussions, and 754,000 writings have been submitted. Nothing could say more about the success of Do the Right Thing than hearing from the adults whose lives were changed by their participation in this program when they were in middle school. My name is Tamika Thompson and I am a Do the Right Thing participant from 1998. I decided to enter the, the writing contest for Do the Right Thing almost 20 years ago because I was inspired um, by one of my teachers from middle school and it was one of the best decisions that I ever made in my life. I wrote a poem. <laughs> uh, I remember writing an essay and then uh, I didn't submit the essay and then I decided to write a poem and I remember it. <laughs> Although violence is everywhere I go and connected with some of the people that I know, I don't want violence to be connected with me because I want my life to be safe and free. So that was a, <laughs> a portion of um, my entry. What I remember was, my goodness, my voice as a young person is going to matter and people are going to listen and there are going to be more people who get to hear my story. I devoted my time in writing because I know that this was an opportunity that cannot be ignored. I grew up in Albany Park in Chicago and there was a lot of violence, a lot of gang activity. When I was in middle school, I was coming home with my mom and I witnessed a really horrific violence in our neighborhood. And after that, we just walked home and it was like nothing happened. We didn't talk about it, we didn't, she didn't ask me questions, I didn't ask questions and it was just a part of my life. It's, that's how I grew up and that's what Albany Park was to me. There was definitely violence in my neighborhood. Um, you know, some nights it would be gunshots, robberies and killings and things like that all the time. That was my reality. I left Iraq when I was seven years old. The process of leaving a country during war, it's extremely dangerous. But my parents wanted to raise us in America. And so I moved to Detroit when I was eight. It was not easy, I'll be honest with you.
when I was able to go to DC, it represented the first time that I was able to get on a plane, the first time that I traveled outside of the state, the first time that I was able to meet government and city officials, and, and they were there for me. Being selected as a winner in Chicago and then in the national stage was really exciting because I never thought I would have the opportunity to be a part of something bigger outside of my neighborhood. During the National Recognition Week, it was really amazing to see lots of different students from different parts of the United States. I was able to reflect on my neighborhood and then just sort of saw a very different vision of what Chicago could be. I am where I am today because of empowering opportunities like do the right thing. Currently, I work at One Goal, which is an education organization that helps low-income students go to college and graduate. After I returned from D.C., I had a special outlook on life. I realized that, as cliche as it may sound, that I, I can make a difference with my own behavior, with my own choices. Today, I am at a school that's very similar to the one I went to as a student. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This morning, I want us to have a discussion regarding a topic, and that's the topic of youth violence. What does violence look like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? What do you see when you hear the word violence? What do you see? As a classroom teacher, I really believed in the Do the Right Thing program. I knew the impact that it had made on me. So I really wanted to make sure to provide that same opportunity to our own students at Detroit Enterprise. My name is Gary McKay. I go to Detroit Enterprise Academy. I was last year's winner of the Do the Right Thing competition. When I found out that I was actually going to Washington, D.C., I thought, like, oh, this is amazing because I didn't grow up in, like, the best neighborhood where just everybody rich kids, and I wasn't, like, that type of kid. To see, you know, my own student in D.C. experiencing the same things that I had experienced when I was in eighth grade was a beautiful, beautiful opportunity. Do the right thing helps you become a better person. And when you see what, how much good you have done, then it's going to inspire you to inspire other people. This year, for the 20th Annual National Recognition Week in Washington, D.C., we have 42 student finalists selected from 499 participating schools. These students' essays were selected from the 65,000 that were submitted this year. And this year's ambassadors impressed us more than ever with their candor, courage, and desire to make a positive impact on their communities. It is time to recognize our Boston ambassadors. The winners are Andres Diaz of the James P. Templeton School. Come on up, look at you, girl. Go on with your bad self. Congratulations. We know that you're gonna represent us well at the National Recognition Ceremony in Washington, D.C. and in and around the city of Boston in the Commonwealth. Today, something um, incredible happened, something that will, like, I, I will always remember because not everybody gets this chance and basically, like, I get to stand out. I chose to focus my essay on a four-year-old boy that I saw who got shot and sometimes I kind of feel guilty that he died because I was watching him and I couldn't say anything about it to warn him. It feels good when you express yourself through writing because sometimes you don't, uh, you like don't have the words to say it, but maybe to write it you might find the right words. Drugs and violence unfortunately are commonplace in the world today. On April 2nd, 2005, my father died due to drugs. I heard stories about my mom having to go into the crack house just to find my dad at the late hours of the night, having breathtaking moments every time the phone rang and he wasn't at home and saying a short prayer to herself, hoping that it was the police calling and saying that he was dead. It was a very emotional experience talking about what happened to my father. I wanted the students in the crowd to actually know 
on my past and hopefully help other people out that were in the crowd that were going through tough times. Do the Right Thing takes enormous pride in what has been accomplished over the last 20 years. But the real strength of the program comes from the extraordinary students and educators who believe in a better future. We look forward to another 20 years of students from around the country doing the right thing.